Hi, Golf WRX. My name is Nick Starchuk, PJ Golf Coach from Toronto, Canada, and I'm here to give you your ultimate grip video. So we've heard so many different times that there's there's different options for the grip. You know, from just a general standpoint, we've talked about uh, weak grips where the hand, the glove hand, is rolled kind of to the left or toward the target. Then there's a neutral grip where. You know, I think that some people feel as though that that's the thumb straight up and down and, you know, not really seeing too many knuckles. And then there's the strong grip where you can see, you know, the back of the left hand and it's twisted to the left. So, you know, all those different things are what they are. But I think that when we start to look at the effectiveness and how they're actually going to be used in your swing, um, you're going to start to notice that there really starts to get really only one type of grip. And, and that's the one that's on there for the strongest for your hands. So... You know, there's so many different width of grips or thicknesses of grips that that's all going to depend on the player's hand. Whether it's a wide palm with short fingers or long fingers or a short palm, there's all kinds of different variations. But one thing we got to recognize is how the fingers go around the golf club is crucial to being able to use this thing. So the first thing that I want to look at is the understanding of when we grab something, how we are being able to use it as either leverage or we're grabbing it to the point where there is no leverage. So for instance, if I were to take the grip and hold it right in the center of my palm and squeeze over top so that I'm, I'm it's not a very um, strong grip biomechanically, like squeezing the pressure, but when it sits in the palm, it kind of freezes my arm to do certain things and prevent it from doing other things. And if I have it too much, you know, all the way down into the fingertips and it's wrapped all over, I kind of get a, a difficult time of getting a feel of where the club face is relative to me. However, when I'm gripping this club and I'm able to hold it in my fingers or my fingers are attached around the grip, all the way around to the pinky finger, which is one of the most crucial ones to have on the club as an attachment. If all my fingers are on the club and my fingerprints or the fingertips are actually touching the rubber, from there, once the hand rolls over top, that's going to be a bit of a different or better scenario for you. What we're going to look for with all this is, well, how much does the thumb extend past the hand? You know, we've seen grips with a short thumb, but when we recognize a short thumb where the thumb doesn't pass the rest of the index finger, that's going to sit the club in the palm. If the thumb extends too much, it's going to feel a little bit awkward to, to swing this golf club. However, the longer the thumb, the more the club has a chance to sit in the pinky connection and in the fingers. And the reason for that is that if I don't have all four fingers on the golf club from a strength perspective, I don't get the advantage of having all four fingers working together. Think of it like one plus one plus one plus one equals five. We're getting a bonus having them all together. But as a test, extend one of your fingers and try and pull your fingers off the club. It seems to be a whole lot easier than if all my fingers are on the club. I can barely pull any of them off. Give that, give that finger pull or that finger stretch a test. Extend one finger, pull another one. You're going to start to notice the difference. So if you take a grip on the club where your fingers aren't attached very well, let's just say that I extend my pinky finger. Now all of a sudden I don't have the connection at the back of, the, at the back of my palm very well, and I end up getting too much, I don't know if you can call it wrist hinge or angle here, where if I did the opposite and I extended my index finger, now my other three fingers have to work overtime to hold this golf club, and I feel as though that I have no leverage on it. I feel like it's, it's almost locked me into place because I'm not using that finger. So we want to try and look for a couple things. One is that all of your fingers are attached to the grip. They're all wrapped around the grip all the way to the fingerprints. From there, you want to make sure that the thumb is longer. So the way that I figured out a way, uh, uh, process to do this is to always take your grip with the club vertical. You can stand with your hands with the club vertical and put your hands on it at a 90 degree angle. Don't arch it up and then grip it because you'll notice that it goes in the palm and it goes into a short thumb. Get the hand on there at 90 degrees, extend the thumb at least to the full knuckle and nail, and then from there put your other hand on, on this way, uh, perpendicular to the grip. Because when it goes on that way, it doesn't have a chance to be artificially or, or poorly put on because we're reaching down the grip or maybe even under the grip to grab it. Get the club vertical, sit it in the finger so all the fingers are connected. Notice the longer thumb, or not a super long thumb, but some of your thumb has to be past the rest of your hand, and then apply your other hand over top to match it up to your comfort. This is the hand where as long as it's in the fingers again, we want to try and see just a couple of things. And the first thing I like to look for is what I call the ball striker crease. When we get our thumb matched up to the other side of our hand, and that goes on the, the, the top of the grip, it creates a bit of a crease. And I'm noticing that the best ball strikers have the longest crease. So if we can get that crease, 
crease pointed straight up and down, right to the middle of you, and then from there, feel as though that the hand is on uh, attached to the grip in the fingers, I think you're going to find that both hands marry up a little bit better. But again, now you're able to use the golf club and use your wrists as they're intended to apply a little power to the club. So I'm not changing the grip just for cosmetics. I'd look to change the grip to make sure that we can get the right amount of leverage and we want to match the face and your path up to the way you want to hit the ball. But that's a whole other story. Sometimes hold, gripping the club in a more strong manner helps the ball go higher with less draw and sometimes taking the, the grip in a weaker manner allows the club head to overtake, close the face and create more draws. So grip type does not equal, directly equal and, and correspond to your ball flight. It's going to correspond a little bit more to lining the club face up and how we can leverage it and release it. So I hope that's helped. I hope they give you a couple ideas on why we're looking for certain things in the grip and not just make it cosmetic because it looks good. We want to try and get the most out of our golfers by being able to have them hold it in the, the best way possible for them to not only leverage the golf club, but to line up the club face.